Hello and welcome to another Manga Spotlight. Today's series is My Neighbor Miss Kurokara by Ito Kiyosuki. And this is a slice of life romantic comedy that so far has been very lighthearted. We haven't gotten too much drama. Actually, we haven't really gotten any drama so far. So uh, yeah, let's just jump into the basic premise. The secret between me and her is trivial yet important. Hajime Takahashi enrolled in Shubi High School solely because it's the sacred place of his favorite manga. Everywhere in the school are locations that appeared in the manga, and he's super excited. Amidst his excitement, Takahashi meets a beautiful girl, Yayao Kuokara, who looks just like the heroine from his favorite work, and they come to share a certain secret. This awkward duo weaves a sweet and tangy yet romantic comedy that will make you grin. And so we start off right away with Takahashi meeting up with Yayao. So we have our two main characters meeting. And then we cut to a flashback of how this meeting happened. Um, this whole school setting is Shubei Private High School. It's one of the top schools in the prefecture. And it's also the inspiration for an extremely popular manga series called Love Map, which from what little I've gathered appears to be a romantic comedy series. And so once Takahashi realized that he had a chance to get into the school, he immediately jumped on board. And we see him just like running around to all these different locations in the school and taking photos because it all matches up with scenes that he's seen in his favorite manga. And he's like, all right, there's only one more place I got to check out. And that's the resource room on the first floor. That's the sacred place where Ayo Tan had her base of operations in the story. So he goes into the resource room and that's where he meets Yayao. And so now we're caught up to uh, the very first scene. And Yaya looks at him and is like, Ayotan, who's that? Because as soon as Takahashi rushes in, that's the first thing he yells out. He yells out, here I am, Ayotan. He's like, oh my god, like this girl looks exactly like Ayotan. Uh, but he immediately starts apologizing. He's like, I didn't think anyone would be in here. Uh, what are you doing in here? And she just says, I have some time before the entrance ceremony. So I got permission to use the resource room to learn about the school's details. And... Takahashi says, like, Jesus, like, this girl looks exactly like Ayotan. And he starts becoming really flustered and nervous. And then Yaya asks once again, so who is this Ayotan? And he explains she's from a manga. And he says, it's a manga that I really like. It's called Love Math. And he basically starts gushing about it. You know, he's like, it's a super duper masterpiece. It's not just cute, but it also has touching scenes that make you cry. It transcends Moe manga with deep themes. It's just basically like this is the first time that he gets to talk to someone about his favorite series. So he just kind of goes on this whole spiel about it. And she just kind of stares at him. And like how she's like, oh, no, like I, I know those eyes. Those are eyes of disdain. Those are eyes from people who hate the fact that I'm an otaku. They think that I'm gross. I just ruined this meeting. He's like, well, I, you know, I'm sorry. I'm going to leave. And he rushes out of the room. And he starts just kicking himself. He's like, you know, I plan to hide my otaku side in high school. This is a new school. Nobody knows me. Nobody knows about my love for manga. And I guess here like, people look down on manga lovers. So he's like, I, I wanted to keep that hidden. But because she looks so much like Iotan, my tongue slipped and I ended up showing her my creepy otaku side. He's like, well, this is a huge school. The chances that I can graduate without ever seeing her again in the next three years are pretty high. And then we get the jump cut gag where it turns out that not only is she in the same classroom as him, but she sits right next to him. He's like, oh, damn it. And he starts fantasizing about the fact that she might reveal his secret to everybody that he's a secret otaku. It's going to get spread around and everyone's going to make fun of him and think that he's gross. He's not going to be able to make any friends. Yeah, he's just like hoping that she forgot about him. But she stares at him and she has like this look in her eyes and she's like, found you. And then she just gets up and walks away. And some of the other classmates are like, wow, like this is the first time I've ever heard Yao yeah, yeah, say anything other than a simple yes or no. Usually she's pretty quiet, but now she says something pretty irregular. And other students are like, oh, this is the first time I've actually heard her voice. And they start like gushing over her. And of course this confuses Takashi. So he's like, is she like some kind of amazing person or something? And everyone gets pissed off at him. And they explain like what her background is. That she's the granddaughter of the chairman of the Kurokara Zaibatsu company. She's super rich. She has um, amazing academic scores. Uh, she excels in sports as well. She's beautiful. She's talented. A lot of people actually enrolled in the school just to follow her. And then this is the part where I don't really care 
too much that the author put into the series. Um, everyone starts getting upset with Takahashi. Like, how dare an unknown commoner sit next to her? And they all kind of, like, look down on him because of that. I just, I don't know. This is, like, a trope that I really hate. Where we have, like, the super popular girl that everyone loves and looks towards. Like, everyone looks up to. And then, as soon as they say, like, one thing towards the main character who's not popular... Everyone starts going after that main character and starts just saying, like, you, you're no good for her. Get away from her. Don't even bother talking to her. And it's just like, I don't know. I don't feel like schools are really like that. Usually, I mean, like, if there's someone that's like super popular and others want to get close to them, they might get a little bit jealous or something. But they're not going to completely ostracize the dude and just completely treat him like garbage. So I hate seeing that in manga because I see that a lot. And we kind of have that here. Thankfully, they don't go over for too much, but still, they, they basically have a bunch of the classmates looking at him with disdain and saying, hey, that's the guy that gets to sit next to Yao Yao. And he's just like, man, what are they? Like in some kind of cold or something? Who's this girl to be so popular that everyone hates me just because she said two words to me? And as he's walking through the hallways, Yao Yao pulls him into a classroom and basically um, says greetings. And she just kind of stares at him for a while. And she's trying to work up the courage to say something. And eventually she says, the manga, love math, please show it to me. Takahashi is confused. And she says, so Yayao explains, I couldn't help but get curious after hearing you talk about it. So please show it to me. And that's when Takahashi realizes that the eyes that she gave him earlier weren't eyes full of disdain. They, she was just locked in. She was just very focused on what he had to say. And so he apologized. He's like, I don't have it with me right now. And uh, her immediate reaction was, was the whole manga loving thing just a lie? And I'm like, eh, that seems to kind of be a weird reaction. Uh, but Takashi's like, no, that's not it. It's just that uh, it's against school rules. So I didn't bring it with me. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Anyways, I'm sorry. They start talking. He's like, you know, do you like manga? And she explains that she's never read one. Uh, her entire life, she basically was seen as the granddaughter of the chairman of the company. So she was forced to excel in her studies and only take high class hobbies. Not only like her parents, but even her classmates expect that from her. So she's always been holding back and trying her best. There are things she would like to experience, but she can't because they're seen as kind of, I guess, low class. And so she's had to lock that part away. But she's always wanted to try out some things, including reading a manga. She's like, you know, uh, this morning when I saw you talking without a care in the world, I thought to myself, that's nice. I want to read that too. But, you know, if there's nothing we can do about it. So uh, thanks for listening to my story. And I'm sorry for stopping you in the hallways. And then she says, could you keep what we talked about here a secret? I'd appreciate it if you did. And the reason for that is because, again, she doesn't want anyone to know that there are things that she would like to experience that she can't. Because, again, she has to hide those. And so Takahashi's like, wait, um, so you really want to enjoy manga secretly, right? Well, if you don't mind, you can read it on an app. That's where I read my manga from. I have it on my phone. The least I can do is lend it to you while we're at school. And then he um, installs the app on her phone and basically tells her how to work it. He's like, you know, just tap this icon and then a bunch of mangas will appear. And then you get to read it to your heart's content. So he shows her a love map and she gets super excited. She's like, whoa, this is manga. And it's just, I don't know, the face she makes here is just freaking adorable. And... um. She gets so excited. She's like, oh, no, like, I let my true self show. Usually, I try to act more composed. Um, is it weird? And he's like, no, not at all. It's not weird for you to get excited over a manga. When I bought my first manga, I felt the same way. And then we see him as a kid just running with a big smile on his face, holding a manga above his head. The fact that he has a nosebleed makes me think he's maybe buying something that's a bit itchy. I don't know. I don't, why else would you be bleeding from the nose unless it's something perverted? But he basically explains... That, yeah, you go, no, I felt the same way. Um, otakus are happy creatures when they find friends. So I'm glad that Yao Yao is enjoying it as much as I do. And then she's like, friends? He's like, oh, uh, you, you don't have to worry. I, I misspoke. Uh, I'll keep everything here a secret. Nobody will know. And so he starts walking away and thinking, oh, maybe my approach was too forceful. Like, maybe I shouldn't have said that we could be friends. Just because we might happen to enjoy the same manga doesn't mean anything. And uh, he's like, you know, I don't want to be a bother to her, especially for a girl who's trying so hard. And then as he's walking down the hallway, he uh, notices that the hallway that he's in is also straight out of uh, 
love map, and it's a very famous scene. It's a scene where Iotan stops the protagonist, and Yao Yao ends up doing the exact same thing. She ends up stopping him right in the hallway in a scene straight out of love map. And she explains to him, I've always been alone. Being able to talk so casually and learn so much from you made me really happy. I'm really glad that I rolled in this high school. I want to be friends with you. This is how their friendship starts. And from then on, it basically becomes Yao Yao meeting with Takahashi in secret so that they can talk about the manga. And the reason, again, that it's secret is because she doesn't want anyone to know that she enjoys manga. It's not that she's trying to hide her friendship with him or anything like that. In fact, she literally talks to him like, hey, do you have a moment right now in front of the classroom? So she has no problems like conversing with him in public. She just doesn't want anyone else to know that she enjoys manga in secret. And he's more than happy to do that because he also doesn't want anyone to know that he's an otaku. And so we just get moments where she just starts, uh, it's so adorable, like just her expressions. She starts gushing over Love Map and she's like, the school in Love Map, is it modeled off of the school that we're going to? And he's like, yeah. And she gets super excited, just like he did. She's just like, I wonder when does this Iotan appear? And then that's when Takahashi is like, I mean, you kind of look like her. I think you you resemble Iotan. And then she starts blushing. He's like, no, that's a load of baloney. I'm not that cute. And anyways, um, she's way more charming than I am. If you tell another weird joke like that, I'll get mad. And it's just, we get stuff like this where they just kind of get together to discuss the manga and Yao Yao like will accidentally do scenes straight out of the manga. So for example, there's one scene in volume five of Love Map where she points to the plum trees that's mixed in with the cherry blossoms. And Yao Yao like notices the tree and she's like, hey, look, there are plum trees mixed in with the cherry blossoms. And even her pose is exactly like Iotan's from the, from the manga. But the thing is, is that these are like future scenes that she hasn't gone to yet. She's only read the first chapter and this is from volume five. So we have a lot of moments like this where she's like accidentally recreating scenes straight out of the manga from chapters that she hasn't gone to yet. And of course, Takahashi notices this and he starts developing feelings for her. Overall, we just see them kind of bonding over their love for this manga. And there's more, but I don't want to like be spoiling everything that goes down. You can read it for yourself right now at the time of this recording. It's only four chapters, but by the time this gets uploaded, there'll probably be more. But yeah, I, I really enjoy this. It's just like a sweet little heartwarming kind of series. You don't have too much drama. I mean, the only drama that you really get is just the fact that the classmates kind of look down a little bit on Takahashi. But it's not like something that gets brought up too much. We only just get a couple of moments here and there, and then they kind of ignore him for the most part. There are some kind of awkward moments. Like, for example, there's one scene where Yao Yao starts getting flustered because in chapter two, there's a scene where Iotan is changing and you don't see anything. Like, you just see her bun, like the shirt buns opened up a little bit and you see parts of her bra. But Yao Yao, like, she's very, like, reserved. She's never seen anything like this. So she thinks, is this, like, is this series erotic? Like, is this something that, like, I shouldn't be reading? And Takahashi has to basically explain to her, like, no, 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 like, there's nothing, like, sexual about the scene whatsoever it's just her having to change her outfit which is something that everyone has to do and it's just showing her vulnerability and things like that so we have like moments like this where basically she's just naive reserved girl who's never experienced manga and we have this otaku who is sharing his love for manga with her and just the journey of the two of them bonding over this series so yeah that's my neighbor miss kurokara I'll leave a link in the description below so you can read it for yourself. But I highly recommend checking it out. It's very sweet and heartwarming. And uh, freaking Yao Yao is adorable. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed and hope to see you next time. Take care. Later. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did it, I still want to thank you for watching it this far. And I hope the next one is more to your liking. With that said, thank you once again. And I hope you guys and gals have a good one. Later.